Hey guys, this is Stephanie and I'm Stacks on Stacks on Stacks. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about big books. One of my New Year's resolutions was to read 10 big books. Now, for argument's sake, I'm going to say a book that is 600 or more pages is a big book. I have a list of probably 30 to 35 big books that are either on my shelves or on my to read list on Goodreads. A few of these are rereads, but most of them are new books to me. So I was just going to go through about 20 ish is what I think I have in front of me books that are 600 plus pages and see if you guys want to weigh in on some opinions of where exactly I should start with these big books. Now last year I wanted to reread the Harry Potter series and I only got through the first two books. So I'm going to pick up at the third book, the beginning of this year and try to get through the seventh book by the end of the year. Cause believe it or not, I think I've read the first four books, like probably four or five times. The fifth book, maybe twice and the sixth and seventh only once because I always start at the beginning and I never get to the end. So this year I'm going to start at the third one and I will get to the end. But three of the books in the series are over 600 pages. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which is the fourth book. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, which is the fifth book. And Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, which is the seventh book. Now I'm also going to have a small disclaimer that my books that I own may not be the one that is over 600 pages. But when I got on Goodreads, it said that the book I was looking at was over 600 pages because I was looking at a few of these. I'm like, these are like 550 pages. So maybe it's a large print edition. I don't know. I'm just going to roll with it. And in case you guys are wondering, these are the British Bloomsbury editions that I think I got on Book Depository. I love these. They're beautiful. These are beautiful copies. And I actually don't want to read them because I don't want to crack the spines or ruin them. I just have them on my upstairs bookshelf looking pretty. Yep. I'm a booktuber. So those are three big books that I think I can get through this year. I'm planning to, but you know, I plan to do lots of things when it comes to reading and then I don't. But I have a lot of other big books that I do need to get to. By the way, I'm trying out something new here with my shelves. I'm not sure if I like it. It might change. I also have Grace of Kings by Ken Liu, which I actually don't know much about this. I got it a couple years ago and it's just been sitting on my TBR because somebody talked about it in a video and it sounded good, so I got it. Yep, that's me. All I really know is it's high fantasy epic and that kind of sounds like something I'd enjoy. I also have Violette by Charlotte Bronte, which though I didn't love Jane Eyre, I was told that Violette is actually much, much better than Jane Eyre. So I will be giving this one a shot. I think it comes in at 601 pages. Yeah. And I also have Layer of Dreams by Libba Bray, which is the second book in the Diviner series. I am just doing like first book in series or the next book from where I'm at in series. I'm not going to be like, oh, all of these books in the series are over 600 pages because I can't guarantee I'm going to binge read a series that all the books are 600 pages or more. No guarantees. But I love Diviners and I read it last year. It was in my top five favorite books of last year. So I'm looking forward to getting my paws on this one. I just... I'm pacing myself because I'm probably going to read the next one too, though that one is not over 600 pages. I have two Brandon Sanderson's on here. I have The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, which I started last year and I got like 60% of the way through it, but I started it in July. I read it mostly in July and a little bit in August, and then I just didn't pick it back up. So I need to just read it all the way through. I will probably be starting this one over, but I will be reading this one this year at some point. The next two books in the series are also over 600 pages, but like I said, I'm not going to bring those up if I read them I will count them towards my 10 but I'm not gonna promise anything and I also want to read Elantris also by Brandon Sanderson another chunker of a book this one kind of follows I think a world that's kind of falling apart and politically has all these problems and issues I know it's been explained to me once what it's about but I kind of forgot but it's Brandon Sanderson so I am expecting to like it I did throw in one Ken Follett book which is the pillars of earth Ooh, wow, this is a bright one. I'll put it here so you can see it. All I really know about this book is that it has a lot of political intrigue and it's like been critically acclaimed and Ken Follett's supposed to be an amazing historical fiction writer, I think. So it sounds like something I would enjoy. I also have 112263 by Stephen King, which is probably one of the few Stephen King books that I'm totally willing to read because it's not like 
horror, gross, jump out at you, mind twisty. It's, well, it's a little mind twisty, but it's more of a time travel book where this guy goes back in time to stop the assassination of JFK. This is something I think I would love to read, and it is also well over 600 pages, so I am excited to read it. I don't know if this is going to make that top 10 list. If you've read this one, by all means, let me know. Then I did go ahead and grab Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss and A Wise Man's Fear. Now, I've read Name of the Wind. But before I read this one, I really want to reread this one because it's been almost two years since I read it. So I think it's time that I read this one and then read this one, maybe not one after the other. I'm not very good at doing that, but maybe one month after the other. And this is a book that I love. I read it, like I said, in 2017 and I loved it. It took a lot of my awards for best this and best that of the year because I just love these characters so much. Kavolf is interesting and fun and the plot really is kind of a slow plot because it's kind of following his life, but there's still a huge driving force getting you through this book. When I got to the end, I just remember thinking, that's the end. I want to pick up the next one and then I didn't, who knows why, but I'm going to reread this and read the next one, hopefully this year for both of those. I also have City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare. This is the sixth book in the Mortal Instruments series, which I think it's taken me like four years to read this series because I generally just want Clary and Jace to die. So I'm really hoping that's what happens at the end of this one. Though I do own this book physically, I'll probably listen to it because I have a really hard time reading it because it's usually too long and painful and I'm questioning why even I'm putting this in this video, but I do want to read this because I want to get to the Dark Artifice series, which I know I can't do until I read this and a couple other ones. So I'm going to do it. But the good news is it's over 600 pages, so it will count. I also have New York, a novel by Edward Rutherford. This is one I also started last summer. I wanted to finish it before I got to New York City and I got like halfway through it. Did not finish it before I got to New York City. And not only is it 600 pages, they're like really thin pages. They're not quite Bible pages, but they're really thin. So it's a heavy book. And it doesn't look that long, but boy, it is. I really was enjoying it. It's a historical fiction account following when they first settled New Amsterdam, which is now New York City. And it takes you through the evolution of the town, everything from the day to day to racism and politics. And it just covers the whole gambit. And it's really interesting and enjoyable. I just need to finish it. Now, last year during Tome Infinity and Beyond, I read Illuminae and fortunately, both the second and the third books are over 600 pages. I have Gemina and Obsidio, which I got from my library because I don't actually own these two. And I am super duper looking forward to continuing on the story. These are two I do want to read this year as well. Again, I'm not great at like binging series, so I don't think I'm going to read this, read this, but I'm probably going to read this one in the next couple months and I'll read this one a few months after that. I've heard good things about these and I've heard the series ends well. So I'm excited to get into that. And the last two I have for you are two in a series. The first one I have read, the second one I haven't. And that would be An Echo in the Bone by Diana Gabaldon, which is the seventh book in the Outlander series. And then Written in My Own Heart's Blood, also by Diana Gabaldon, which is the eighth book in the series. Now, there's supposed to be nine books in this series. The ninth book is like, go tell the bees I'm home or something like that. It isn't out yet. I don't think it has a release date either, but saying these are both not short books, I think that if I read this one and I time it right and read this one, that I can pick up the ninth one and I can finish the series. That would be good. I think most of the books in the series are close to 600 or over 600 pages. It ain't a short series. It's a series that I actually started a very long time ago, probably like 14 years ago, I think I started it. And I read the first one, second one, third one, waited for the fourth one to come out. Then I read the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, waited for the fifth one to come out. And so I've just kind of reread them so many times that I remember pretty much what happened in all of them, except I've only read this one once. So I only like half remember and I haven't read this one at all. So I will get there. And I know a few of you guys are probably like, I thought you don't like romance books. And I will say that the romance in Outlander is something that I tend to tolerate it's not my favorite. Like, I don't like the sex scenes. They kind of make me uncomfortable. I tend to kind of skip over them, to be honest. But it has such great historical depth to it, and the characters are so rich, and the plot is so inventive. I really enjoy these books, and I'm willing to look past a few sex scenes in a book to enjoy a book. Now, like I said, I have about 10 more on the list of books that I don't own that are just on my to-be-read pile on Goodreads. A few of those are Iron Gold, 
by Pierce Brown, Furies of Cauldron by Jim Butcher, Black Prism by Brent Weeks, London by Edward Rutherford, Tales of the Shadow Hunter Academy by Cassandra Clare, Paris by Edward Rutherford, and Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson. That one is like a third book in a series though, so it's kind of not going to matter on this list. But that is it. Those are the behemoth books that I own. I would like to get 10 of those read this year, and it's like middle February and I've read zero, so I should get on that. And I want your guys' opinion. I want you to comment down below which two books I either need to read or reread this year. I just really need help narrowing this list down some, and I'm hoping that you guys can start the way in process and I can at least get one of these started by the end of February. And this is actually a video that I have been wanting to film for about a month and a half now. About the time I did my New Year's resolutions, I was like, ooh, I wanna film a video and I wanna talk about big books. And I think we tend to avoid big books because, well, they're big and they're intimidating and that's a lot of commitment. A 600 page book is a big commitment because what if it's not going well? And what if you're the kind of person who doesn't DNF book? I'm not big on DNFing. I usually am like, well, maybe the end will pay off is kind of how I think. That is not always true. As you can see, if you watch any of my worst reads or disappointing reads video, I got a lot to pick from. But I'm very much hoping that, that my 600 page plus books do not end up on that list. So please, please weigh in down below. Two books, like I said, what should I read next? I'll let you guys choose. So thank you so much for watching. I love it that you guys watch. I love it that you comment. It means so much to me. I post videos on Mondays or Tuesdays and on Fridays every week. So feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will plan to see you very, very soon. Goodbye.